Happy Libra! I have not looked at this chart, so me looking at it with you will be my very first time. It is November the 13th, I believe, today, and Kyrie Irving is very big in the news right now. Something about him posting a link on his social media page, and then, like, because he's supposed to be a basketball player, and then, like, I guess the NBA didn't like that he did that or something, but then, like, they made a list of all these demands, and, like, I've been following it, but I don't want to say anything because the thing that he posted, I didn't actually watch it, so I don't want to have an opinion, because I think a lot of people are having opinions who didn't actually watch it. He's big in the news right now, November 13, 2022. Go check it out for yourself, okay? So I maybe will have an opinion once I check out the link that he posted or what it's about. So what I wanted to do was just check out his birth chart. This has nothing to do with the situation right now. This is just his birth chart. I like to check out people's personalities. Yeah, because I like doing that. So I really have to go to the bathroom, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to do this. Okay, I'm going to start with the first house. Okay, right off the bat, I'm seeing that Kyrie Irving is an airy sun sign. And um, I wonder if I could draw, draw as I'm talking. So he is an airy sun. And um, he's got Mercury and Aries as well in this retrograde. And um, Mercury and Aries, mm, that's very interesting. Because in general, Mercury and Aries, um, well, I would say when it comes to leadership, if this person makes the decision to use his leadership to speak with other people, seeing he, that he has Mercury and Aries, he can be quite successful in that sense. I don't even know if my sentence made sense. If he decides to be a leader in which he speaks to people, he can be quite successful in his endeavors. Mercury in Aries would be gifted in leadership verbally. Okay, let me move on. And then um, he's got Venus in Pisces. Wow, this person has Venus in Pisces. Holy shit. You know, I can't get away from it. It popped in my head three times, so I'm just going to say it. This is God-like energy, angel-like energy. Um, because Venus is the planet of love. Pisces is the planet of love. Anything to do with Pisces and Libra or Pisces and Venus combined is like heightened love. I'm talking generally here. Venus and Pisces, this is someone who believes the world can be a better place. The world can be loving. The world can be... Basically what we call dreams or something that can't happen, this person believes that it can. They don't think that it's dreams. They think that, yes, the world can be better. We can have world peace. We can have world love. We can have unity. Um, we can eliminate hate. We can eliminate racism. They believe that the world can be a better place. That's why I said it's like angel-like energy all right and moving on to the this section here and that was in his 12th house which makes it even stronger interesting okay um then we have mars and aquarius saturn and aquarius and this is in the 11th house hmm Okay, Mars in Aquarius is good for 
or overall physical energy. This person has a lot of physical energy. I would almost say that this person, if you were to go up against them in some physical way, yeah, sports, let's say, you're probably going to lose because I would say this person has the energy of multiple people, which sounds very strange, right? But yeah, this person has the energy of multiple people, so they can probably outdo you. They can probably last long in things that other people are not able to last so long in. Yes, because Aquarius is groups and Mars is physical energy, so this person has a lot of physical energy. Perfect, perfect uh, career for this person is basketball. And it's in the 11th house of hopes, dreams, and wishes. And so th I would consider that to be lucky, actually. Now, Saturn in the 11th house in, in uh, Aquarius. Um, this is going to sound like I'm doing this on purpose. That can bring lessons, like be big lessons, that can play out in worldwide. Because... Aquarius can talk about World Wide Web. Aquarius can talk about the world. Aquarius can talk about groups. Saturn is usually a planet of restrictions, lessons, karma, that type of thing. So at some point in this person's life, there could be a major lesson or ongoing multiple lessons that play out worldwide. Okay, or there could be some restriction having to do with the world and uh, you see all of what I know so far, it's actually, I'm seeing it in the chart. So it's like hard for me to read and not think <laughs> about what I know. Okay, let me move on to the Neptune and Uranus in the 10th house. That's an interesting combination. Um, Neptune and Uranus in the 10th house in Capricorn. Okay, well, seeing that he's got Capricorn on his 10th house, that's a very good thing in general. It means that he knows how to be mature. He knows how to stay focused until he gets things done. He's very good at being a leader if he wants to. Very good at being a father a, a leader figure, um, yeah, taking leadership. Now, the fact that Neptune and Uranus is there, wow, that's, um, the Uranus part is very easy for me to explain, but the Neptune part, that's a little different. See, Neptune is where we're cloudy, where we can become cloudy, where we are uncertain, where we where things become murky. Maybe we don't see things so clearly. And then we have um, Uranus, which is the planet of, you know, it's like the unexpected. And these are both sitting in his career house. And like I said, as I'm speaking, I'm trying not to listen to myself because I know what I know. But it's here in his astrology. So what I'm seeing here is this. We see this playing out now. He's got Neptune and Uranus sitting on each other in his 10th house of career. Neptune is cloudiness. Uranus is like something that we don't expect. So I think just looking at this, something right now in 2022 has set these two planets off. Because these two energies are playing out for this person at this time. The cloudiness, the not understanding, the something unexpected, affecting the career, leadership. And then earlier I talked about Mercury being in Aries. Oh yeah, this is uh, definitely playing out now. Oh, you know what's it's the coolest thing about this? He has his north node in the same area. Now this is getting very interesting, people. Oh my goodness. I'm going to go ahead and say this. 
whatever this man is going through right now, it's his destiny. It is his destiny. You have Neptune and Uranus in the 10th house, and you've got the North Node sitting five degrees in, in um, his 10th house as well. Whatever is playing out, he's destined to go through this. There's something about his destiny here. Saturn, people look at Saturn as if it's a bad planet, but it doesn't have to be. It can also mean that you're a leader in some way. It really depends on the rest of your chart because Capricorn energies are so authoritative. It can also talk about being a steady, stable, serious leader. Which I know can sound strange, but yeah, it looks like this is his destiny playing out. So I would say that there is some planets passing through his chart that are setting off these energies right now. Let's keep going. I want to look at this. His moon in Pluto in uh, 10, 11, 12. No, not 10, 11, 12. Um, oh, one. Ooh, wow. He's got Pluto and his moon in Scorpio in the 8th house. That doesn't sound like fun. That's not sounding like fun. He's a very deep feeling person, but you won't really know it. Yes, and this person could experience many rebirths. Not rebirths, literally. It's like transformative energies. It's like you come to the realization, having Pluto and Scorpio, that life is just a bunch of transformation. So after a while, you just kind of accept it, you know. And, and you know, people may look at you and say, well, why aren't you having a reaction? Because you, you've been through transformative energies already when you have Pluto and, and Scorpio. So, um... Yeah, that was an interesting birth chart. Um, as far as his personality goes, I usually do these readings because I want to see people's true feelings about how they view love. Not not people, men, men, okay? If they're promiscuous, if they use women, if they like beautiful women, if they're very superficial, that's really what I'm looking for. And what I can see here... Oh, I wish I didn't even start. Let me just stick to the good points. This person believes in one world love. That everybody can have what they need and be happy on this planet. I can see that. And in terms of him being a good person or a bad person, I'm not seeing him be a bad person. Not with his moon sign. Not with his Venus sign and not with his Mars sign. I'm seeing that this is a person that wants good things for, for everybody. But whatever he's going through, it's in his career specifically with this. In career house, it's destiny. So that was my astrological chart reading for Kyrie Irving. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Bye for now.